Hi, Matt Allington here, and today I'm going to show you how you can rename all the columns in a table at once using the M language and Power Query. Uh, let me first of all explain the scenario. So here I have an AdventureWorks database, and I've got my calendar table, etc. And what I'd like to do is load a second copy of the calendar table so that I have one calendar table that I use for the order date and another calendar table that I use for the delivery date. Now for demonstration purposes, what I've done is I've taken the order date in the sales table for AdventureWorks, and I've also created another column which I've called delivery date, and that's simply just the order date plus five days. So now I have two date columns in my sales table. It is possible for me to create um, another relationship between the calendar table and the date column like this. So now I'll have two relationships. The second relationship is inactive and I could use the calculate function to activate the delivery date relationship when needed. But there is an alternative approach and that is to create another copy of the calendar table. So that's what I'm about to do now. So I'm going to delete this relationship because I don't need the second relationship. And I'll go back and I'll go straight into edit queries. And now I'm in here, I'm going to create a new copy of the calendar table, and I'm simply just going to right click and reference the existing copy. And I'm going to rename this calendar table delivery. And in fact, I'm going to rename this one the order calendar. Okay, now if I close and apply, um, I've got my matrix set up here and I've put the year available here. Let's come and have a look. Now I'm going to need to create a new relationship with my new copy of the calendar table. And this time I'm going to join the delivery date up to the delivery calendar and just check that that's correct. And now what I'm able to do is I can create a matrix that shows the order year down here and the delivery year along the columns here. So you can see here there's 977 orders taken in 2001 that were delivered in 2001. But there were 36 orders that were taken in 2001 that were actually delivered in 2002. So if you want to do this type of um, matrix analysis, you do need to have two calendar tables in this case. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to modify the delivery calendar so that the names of these columns have the word delivery in front. So I want this to say delivery year, delivery month ID, delivery financial year, etc. And that can really help clarity uh, when you have two calendar tables. All right, so to do that, I'm going to go back into edit queries and we're going to do a little bit of M coding. Now there's actually two ways to solve this problem. So here's my delivery calendar. And the first important thing is to make sure that you have the formula bar turned on because this will really, well, it allows you to do custom coding using the M language, but it also allows you to look at the underlying code and understand what's happening or learn what's happening. You can do that by going to the view menu and turning on the formula bar here. Okay, now there's at least two ways that I know of of doing this. And I'm going to show you the first way, which is a little bit more of a hack but it also goes to demonstrate how you can learn the M language just by looking at the user interface. So what I'm gonna do first of all is I'm going to manually change a couple of these columns and let's have a look at what happens here. So if I put delivery, I'll just put DEL in front. You can see from the code now that there's a table.rename columns step that was generated. It starts with the source step, or in other words, the table that we had previously. And then you've got this strange construct here. So let me copy this it's got two curly braces on each side and I'm going to copy that control C and now what I'm going to do for demonstration purposes is I'm going to add a custom step and instead of referring to the source step I'm just going to enter that code that I copied and let's have a look at what happens so when I do that it creates this list and so um, in fact, this list here has two items in a list. So this is technically a list of lists. 
And so um, let me come back here and we'll have another uh, look at this. So I'm going to do two this time. So let's go DL and I'll do this one here. So I'm using the user interface and see now that I've got this same construct as before, these curly braces. So these are actually the list operators. I'm going to copy that and then I'm going to replace all of this code just with those curly braces. And you can see how this is a list of lists. And so um, this, this concept, if I could create a list of lists, then I would be able to pass that list of lists through to my code instead of the curly braces that are automatically generated. And so my objective therefore is to come up with a list of lists with the previous name of the column and the new name of the column. And once I've got that, I can actually do the transformation. Okay, so I'm going to try and produce a list of all of the column names and turn it into a list of lists. So I'm going to add a custom step. By default, it takes the previous step, so it gives me the table from the previous step. And I know this by uh, looking at some of the documentation and just playing around with the code in the past, but there's a function called table.columnNames. And in fact, the functions are very well named and, um, and if you just have a guess of these names of these functions, you can actually find things that are useful. So table.columnNames, notice that there's another one there called table.transformColumnNames. We'll come back to that one later. So table.columnNames, somehow the IntelliSense lost my, my step, which is the source step. And so let's hit enter on that. And here we've got a list of all of the table names. So this is actually the first step in creating my list of lists. This is the list of all the existing column names. So now I want to add another column here. So to do that, I need to turn it into a table. I won't put any delimiters in place. So now I've got a column in a table. It's a slightly different concept. And now I'm going to add a new column, a custom column. And this is going to be the word del space ampersand for concatenate and the existing column. And so now I've got my from list, or in actual fact it's a column, it's my from column, my to column. And so what I need to do now is I need to turn this back into a, a list of lists. Now if I come back to the transform menu here, there is a option here, convert to list. It sounds promising. But if I click on this column and click convert to list, it just keeps that one column. So that's actually not what I need. Um, if I try and multi-select those two columns, you'll see that I convert to list is not an option. So what I need to do is to find a way to turn this table into a list of lists. So I'm going to try some code here. Table dot to list is a good candidate. Now there's actually a little bug here, I think, in the IntelliSense. If I if I select that, notice how it replaced the previous code and I didn't actually want to do that. So I need to be careful. Table dot to list open brackets. It takes a table as a table, so that's what I've got there. And let's see what happens. Now when I do that, it actually does create a list, but this list doesn't look the same as the one that I had. This is a list that is separated by commas, and so this is actually not what I wanted to do. Um, now there is another function here which um, I actually discovered by asking a friend of mine, Imke Feldman from BI Accountant, and she suggested that I try this one to rows, and so table dot two rows, and when I do this it turns it into a list of lists, and now you can see that it's identical in structure to that other curly bracket construct that I showed you before. So this is the list of lists. And so what I can do here, this is actually the uh, the list itself. Let's go back here, that's a list. So what we want to do now that we've got this list of lists, so let's rename this list of lists. And now I'm going to add another custom step. And instead of starting with list of lists, I'm going to go back and grab the source. 
So there's the source and now if I go through the process of renaming one of these columns it generates the step for me and now I can just replace this list of lists with my list of lists. And once I click OK you can see that I've successfully renamed all of these columns. Now, um, so this is a bit of a hack and um, this is not the easiest way of doing it but this is a good way of solving the problem if you do happen to have a list of all of your uh, column names like this you could copy and paste them into Excel you could put your new columns on the right hand side load them up as a list of lists and then you could use it to do a renaming step okay so now I'm going to show you the second way of doing it this is a better way of doing it but you do have to know a little bit more about um, the functions that exist so I'm going to right click and reference the same query again this time I won't load it because I only need a single copy and I'm going to add a custom step and this time I'm going to use that other function which was called table.transform column names once again you've got to be careful here because if I ideally I'd like to just hit tab to select this but when I do that even clicking on with the mouse it loses that other step so I just have to manually add that back okay now it's saying name generator as function now I've learnt a little bit of the M language um, just by experience and I'm going to have a guess at this. I did this yesterday and I'm going to say each. So for each row I'm going to take the word DEL space and I'm going to concatenate it with this underscore character. And so in a way this is a bit like a row context in the DAX language. And so what this says is for each row in this table, change the column names and pr basically rename them as DL space followed by the existing column name. So let's have a look. And there you have it. So that's certainly the easier way of doing that transformation. But if you do it this way, of course, you have to have no other changes. If you take the other way that I showed you before using a list of lists, you could load up your own transformation list in Excel and then load that data up from there. So the last thing I'm going to do now is do a close and apply. And now you can see on the right hand side that it's much clearer that the delivery year is on the columns. I could do the same process for the order date. So this would then say order year and delivery year and that would make it much clearer what the matrix is actually showing you. If you like this tip and if you'd like to learn more about Power Query, please take a look at my online Power Query training course. It's seven and a half hours of structured training and video that will teach you techniques like the one I've shown you today.